Hey Seth with Glue Voltage here. In today's video, I'm going to discuss some ways that you can use Ohm's Law that, you know, are outside of the, the typical volts times amps equals watts. Um, that's pretty common, but there's really a lot more to Ohm's Law and a lot of good information that we can find using Ohm's Law in a 12 volt environment. We'll be discussing how to figure out how many amps a, an amplifier needs based on the voltage and the wattage output. We'll also be discussing how to determine the maximum amperage between two points such as your alternator and a car battery when you're charging it. Finally, something that I use very frequently and explain to people quite frequently as well is how to figure out voltage drop. Um, this is a big one, especially if you are working to get the maximum amount of volts to your amps. And it'll help you figure out why you are seeing a lower amount than expected voltage at your amplifier if you're measuring it and wondering where your voltage is going or how you can improve it. Let's start with figuring out approximately how many amps of current an amplifier is going to need with your setup. Um, to do this, we'll take the, the watts the amplifier is outputting divided by the volts that we're giving the amplifier. And finally, we'll factor for efficiency, which is a step that I see a lot of people miss and something that definitely changes the, the number that you're going to get and see that you're going to need. For this example, we're going to assume that your amplifier is putting out 5,000 watts at 14.4 volts. The first step would be to take that 5,000 watts and divide it by the 14.4, and we're going to get an output of 347 amps. This is when it's important to factor for efficiency. So in this example, let's assume that our amplifier is 80% efficient. We're going to take the 347 amps that we got from our previous calculation, and then we're going to divide it by 0.8, which represents the 80% efficiency, and we're going to get the total amperage requirement of 433 amps as seen here. Did you know that Ohm's law will limit how many amps can possibly flow through a circuit at any given point in time? If not, you are not alone. I talked to quite a few people who aren't aware of this when they're sizing their alternator and determining what equipment to buy. Uh, so let's go ahead and discuss what is the, the limiting factors and how you can calculate the maximum amperage you receive. This is actually one of the easier calculations to perform using the formula from the previous screen that is voltage divided by resistance equals maximum amps, we will apply that to this example. First, we're going to take the voltage that our alternator outputs. In this example, it is 14.4 volts. Next, we will compare that to the resting voltage of our battery. In this case, we're basing it off of uh, lithium iron phosphate, so we'll have a resting voltage of 13.4 volts. The math doesn't get much easier than this. It leaves us with a one volt difference between the alternator and the battery. To make this easy to follow along, we're going to assume 10 foot positive and 10 foot negative wires coming from the alternator directly to the battery. And in the first example, we're going to assume that we're using four zero wire. So this will be the same actually as dual one zero. A quick Google search will let us know that four zero wire should have 0 0.049 milliohms per foot. So if we have 10 feet, that is 0.49 milliohms per 10 feet. Next, we have to remember that we're measuring the resistance in the full circuit, so we also need to add this 0.49 milliohms for the ground wire returning to, to the alternator. Now that we know the resistance of our wiring, we can add it to the resistance of our battery, which in this case is 3 milliohms. So we're adding 0.49 milliohms twice to 3 milliohms, and it gives us a total of 3.98 milliohms. Next, we take our 1 volt difference and divide it by the 3.98 milliohms, and that gives us 251 amps of current could potentially flow from the alternator to the battery. So in this example, with a 180 amp alternator, we would be getting full use of the alternator and it would be able to send the maximum amount of current back. Let's do another example, this time using more reasonable wiring. Let's assume we're using 10 AWG, 10 feet to and from. Um, with this, we know it's 0 0.098 milliohms per foot. We'll multiply that by 10, and we end up with 0.98 milliohms per 10 feet. We need to add that twice 
and that gives us a total of 4.96 milliohms of resistance between the alternator and the battery. Using our formula of volts divided by resistance, we have 1 volt divided by 4.96 milliohms, and we get 201 amps, so even with 10 feet of 1-0 wire, your alternator would still be able to send its full 180 amps of current back to the battery. As many of you know, the battery, if it's fully charged, will very quickly jump in voltage, so now we're going to calculate for what happens when the battery is up to 13.9 volts and your alternator is at 14.4 volts using the same 1-0 wiring as before. Now, we don't need to refigure our resistance since we already figured out how much our resistance would be, but we are changing the difference in the voltage down to 0.5. So in this case, we would be taking 0.5 and dividing it by the resistance of each. As you can see in this example, using 1,0 AWG wire, we would have a maximum output of 100 amps. This doesn't matter if your alternator is 180 amps or 340 amps, only 100 amps will flow back. Ohm's law restricts the current here. Um, even using dual 1,0, which is the equivalent to 4,0 AWG, we would have a maximum of 125 amps. So doubling your wire or having the resistance of your wire in this case would only yield a net gain of about 25 amps of potential current that can charge the battery. For our final example, we're going to go back to the one volt difference that we had before, but this time we're going to assume that you ran eight AWG wire, which has a resistance of 0.628 milliohms per foot. Multiplied by 10, we have 6.28 milliohms, and we need to multiply that by two for each wire. This leaves us with 12.56 milliohms of resistance from the wiring added to the 3 milliohms of the battery that we're charging, giving us a total of a bit over 15 milliohms of total resistance. Now taking the 1 volt difference and dividing it by our resistance as seen here, you will see that the maximum potential amperage that can charge the battery from the alternator with this 1 volt difference is approximately 64 amps. Um, this is a far cry from, you know, what we saw easily being able to charge at maximum capacity using the larger wire. In this case, the resistance restricts it, and, you know, we are charging at about a third of what the alternator could potentially provide to the battery. Um, this is a great reason why you see people commonly say that you need to upgrade your big three because the amount of resistance between your alternator and your battery or your alternator and your amplifiers as well will have a major impact on the limits that your alternator can provide as well as the voltage drop, which we will see in our next examples. Next, we're going to talk about likely the most underused formula that Ohm's Law provides us for our application. And that is how to calculate the amount of voltage that we're going to lose between two points. The formula is very simple. It's just the resistance in ohms multiplied by your current, and that'll be measured in amps. To keep things simple here, we're going to assume the same battery from earlier with a 3 milliohm internal resistance, and we will be using the 1,0 AWG wire, which we previously calculated as a round trip of 0.196 milliohms added to the total resistance. So let's assume you're using an 8,000 watt amplifier and it has a burst current requirement of 500 amps. We add the 3 milliohms, the 1.96 milliohms, for a total of 4.96 milliohms, and we multiply that by 500, which represents the current in amps. And the total, as you can see here, is 2.48 volts lost in this situation. Assuming our battery was at 13.3 volts before, that leaves us at 10.8 volts, which is well below what we'd like to see for anything car audio related. So to reiterate, to calculate the voltage drop, we're going to take the total amount of resistance between the battery and the amplifier and multiply it by the total amount of current, in this case 500. So what can you do to fix this problem and make it better? The reality is, in this case, not a lot. 
And that's because with the 3 milliohm resistance at the battery, 1.5 volts of our voltage drop is coming from the battery itself, which will leave us with a voltage of 11.8 leaving the battery itself before we even touch the wire. Your best bet in this situation is to either get a better battery or get additional batteries to split the voltage drop between each battery. If we add a second identical battery, it should approximately have the voltage drop. Next, and we've all seen this, let's assume we use the 8 AWG wire again. Given 10 foot to and from, that would leave us with a total additional resistance of 12.56 milliohms that we needed to add on to the 3 milliohms of the battery itself. Next, we take the 15.56 milliohms and we multiply it by 500 amps, and you'll see we would have 7.78 volts lost. Um, so if we started off at 13.3 and subtracted that amount, it equals protect mode. Um, most assuredly, the total voltage seen would only be 5.52 volts, and I don't know of any amplifiers that are not going to go into protect mode almost immediately at that voltage. So uh, we've all seen people do it using undersized wire, and that is actually what happens when you pull current through the undersized wire without even getting into any of the safety or heat ramifications of doing so. And that does it for today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and ask. If you have anything that you would like to see tested, uh, we love ideas. Always willing to put something on our test bench, figure out what's really going on, especially with disputed topics. So if there's something that you're getting multiple answers on, you know, comment down below. Uh, if you like this content, go ahead and subscribe to our channel, and we will try our best to continue releasing content like this. Um, just let us know what ideas you have, and we will do it.